Hello and welcome everybody. It's Matt from MTG Gaming Bob. Today I've got a deck tech of a Morophon deck, uh, but prior to getting to the deck tech, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is the Jake and Joel R. Magic's uh, league that they have going on. This month's theme is everybody has to play Morophon as their commander. Um, and then there's a sub theme that it's intended that everybody plays tribal, some kind of tribal. Uh, so with Morphon the commander, it gives you access to all five colors. Everybody plays Morphon. That's why the uh, typically the, the budget is $100, and that's why it currently says $118. Uh, the commander, since everybody has to pick the same one, doesn't count towards your budget. And he's about a $20 commander. So this is actually a $100 budget deck. Every week we get $50 to be added to the budget, and then I play to play in like a pods and try to try to win. Pretty fun. If you like that uh, kind of content, or if you like that kind of uh, fun. Uh, head over to Jake and Joel's Patreon, uh, Jake and Joel Our Magic, and YouTube and Patreon. You're able to join the league for just five dollars a month. They didn't ask me to say any of this, but it's really fun. I think it's uh, I think it's worth it. You get into pods of a bunch of new Magic players and old Magic players, and then all kind you know just all variety of different Magic players. Uh, so what I wanted to do is prior to getting into the deck tech, because Morphon, to, in my opinion, is not the best commander for this deck. I wanted to give three separate options for good commanders. Oh, and also the reason why Fist of the Sun's here and Jota is here is because they're both banned in the league. Uh, because compared, uh, when you pair them with Morphon, it starts making everything free, all your creatures free. And that can get a little, you know, not great, I guess. Uh, they decided that they wanted to ban that, that little interaction. But at any rate, Reaper King, very solid commander for the deck. Um, Tiamat, another very solid commander. This is a tribal, tribal deck. Um, so it's going to be a lot of changelings and shapeshifters and, and the like. So... Um, for Team F, for example, you'll be able to go search five changelings when you cast uh, Team F. So that's a pretty solid thing. Five, two to five of your best changelings. And there's some pretty powerful changelings. Uh, same thing with the first sliver. Uh, so it cascades when you cast it. Five mana for seven, seven. That's a pretty good value. Uh, then you also get the cascade trigger. And then you also have slivers uh, cascade. There's already four slivers in the deck. Plus, I think, 16 shapeshifters changelings. So they'll also cascade, uh, so that's a pretty solid uh, benefit there. And then with Reaper King, um, you just start destroying permanents when, when you cast all your changelings when he's in play. Uh, so, you know, just pretty three different commanders that you can choose. Uh, Reaper King being only 5 bucks, TMF being $9, and the first sliver being 20 So, yeah, pretty good options there. So getting into actually the actual commander deck itself, I'm going to try to make this a little quicker. I like to normally give a lot of details and like go into each card, explain each card, but I'm going to try to make this quicker. The first video I made for this deck tech was like 55 minutes long. And I figured that's way too long. So this is the second run through. So, Morph on the Boundless. 7 mana for a 6-6 six, six Changeling, Shapeshifter. All these things, are anything that's Changeling, they are they count as every creature type. So there's a lot of combos. Just think of, I tried explaining on every card that that's, this happens. But you guys can figure it out, I think. Uh, so, uh, as Morphon enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Uh, typically, you choose like a Shapeshifter, most likely. Uh, but again, there are benefits to choosing other things depending on what it is. Don't always stick to that. Anyways, spells of the chosen type cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Any any other colored pips, you take away one of them. If it has multiples, you take away all of them, uh, but just one of each color. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one. Boom. Amiibo and Changeling, this is mainly just a Changeling that is cheap. You want a, a, a decent enough Changelings to trigger all of the non-Changeling things that you have in the deck that kind of make it uh, tribal tribal. So this is a fairly cheap Changeling. It does have a tap ability. You can tap target creature, and, or, and, or I'm sorry, tap it. Target creature gains all creature types until end of turn, or target creature loses all creature types until end of turn. I mean, use your imagination. There's benefits to doing that. Uh, Atla Palani Nest Tender. It's one green, red, white. Two, three. Two col tap two colors. Tap Atla. Create a zero, one green egg creature token with Defender. Whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest onto you at the bottom of your library in a random order. All your changelings are eggs. It's pretty cool when the board gets wiped and you have Atla on the battlefield. Uh, Ayula, Queen Among Bears. One colorless, one green. It's a bear. Two, two. Whenever another bear enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. But two one one counters on target bear or target bear you control fights a target creature you don't control a lot of removal if you have a lot of changelings and you start casting changelings and you have changelings fight things and it's pretty awesome if you like that that's a value a zombie lady of scrolls three blue two colorless zero two human wizard tap it on tap wizard control draw a card 
Uh, pretty good value when all your changelings are wizards. You can tap your changelings and draw some cards. Really good draw engine. It helped me win the game today. Uh, so, Bloodline Pretender. Three mana for a 2 2 changeling. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, most likely going to be Shapeshifter. Uh, whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on Bloodline Pretender. This gets bigger. Uh, Chameleon Colossus, 2 green, 2 colorless for a 4 4 Shapeshifter. Changeling. Protection from black, and you can pay two colorless, two green. Chameleon Colossus gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is its power. It, it can grow. It, it gets big. Changeling Outcast. Really good changeling. It's one black. Shapeshifter. One, one. Changeling. Changeling Outcast can't block and can't be blocked. Unblockable changeling that can grow and get bigger and swing in and boom, boom, bang, bang. We good. Cloud Shredder Sliver. There are four slivers in the deck because changelings are also slivers, so, you know, they get a lot of benefits from doing like that. Uh, this one is a red and a white, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Sliver creatures you control have flying in haste. That's pretty good. Like that. Draw Skull Captain. One colorless, one white, one blue. It's a 2-2 two, two flyer. Other spirit creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have hexproof. All your changelings are also uh, spirits, believe it or not. And they're, they're going to get those benefits. Pretty sick. Gem Hide Sliver. One colorless, one green for a 1-1. One, one. All slivers have tap one. Uh, add one man of any color. Notably, it is all slivers, so your opponent's changelings or slivers also gain this benefit. So make sure that uh, if you don't want that to happen, just use Mana Whiff Sliver instead. I run both. It's fine. Grave Shifter. Three colorless, one black for a 2-2 two, two, uh, two, two changeling shapeshifter. When it enters the battlefield, return to our creature card from graveyard to your hand. Get stuff back from your graveyard. When they kill your stuff, you get it back. I like this. This is good. Airboss Druid. One colorless and a green. It's a 0-1 Human Druid ally. Add X mana of any one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of allies you control. All your changelings are also allies. Pretty sick. I like that. L lots of ramp. <clears throat> Harmonic Sliver. One colorless, one green, one white. It is a 1-1 one, one Sliver. All Slivers have. This permanent enters the battlefield. Destroy target. Artifact or enchantment. You need removal. This helps with that. This counts itself. It counts all your changelings. Good synergy. The regular Cohort. Two colorless, two white, a shapeshifter changeling. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 2-2 two, two colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling. So the two four mana for two creatures. They both trigger on enters the battlefield effects and a lot of different things. Great value. Magda Brazen Outlaw. One colorless, one red for a 2-1. Dwarf Berserker. Other other dwarves you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. Sacrifice five treasure tokens. Search your library for an artifact or a dragon card. Put that on the battlefield and shuffle your library. All your changelings are also dragons, believe it or not. So you'd be able to go tutor them. You can go tutor your Fist of Sons if you're playing the non-league version. Uh, yeah, great things. All kinds of great stuff with that. With uh, Azami, you can tap your changelings to draw cards, which will also generate treasures. Yeah, pretty good. Mana Whiff Sliver. This is the other sliver I spoke about where only your slivers get uh, the uh, tap one, mat, add one man of any color. Mass Vandal. One color is one green. It's a shapeshifter, also a changeling. One, three... When it enters the battlefield, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. There are god enchantments that are hard to get rid of because they're indestructible. This gets rid of them. It's fantastic. And plus of other things, it's great. Just get rid of it. Get, it's gone. Out of here. Mere Entity. This puts the, the hurt in a lot of people. It scares the hell out of them. Anytime it hits the battlefield, they're scared. They want to remove this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to eat removal. It's okay. Uh, two colorless, one white for a 1-1 one, one shapeshifter changeling. You could pay X mana. X can be zero if you want to kill all your creatures for whatever reason. Until end of turn, creatures you control have base, power, and toughness XX until end of turn and gain all creature types. Eh, you know, there are some benefits with that. You can do, you, if you wanted to kill all your creatures with Atla, you, all your changelings are eggs, so then all your changelings would morph into whatever's in your library off the top. It is random, but it's fun. It used to be a combo. It's, it's cool to have in here. Why not? Uh, Morite of the Frost. Two colorless, one green, two blue, shapeshifter changeling. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a permanent you control, except it is a legendary and snow in addition to its other types. And if it is a creature, it has two additional 1-1 one -one counters on it and has changeling. It's a clone for your stuff. It's pretty good. Mothla changeling. It's a blue shapeshifter changeling. Uh, tap it on tap creature you control. Mothla changeling gains flying until end of turn. That doesn't really matter. It's just a cheap shapeshifter changeling. The flying thing is kind of whatever. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's probably never going to be that big a deal, but a lot of those enter the battlefield effects are beneficial. Chrome Cloak Giant, 7 mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Not great. It has Vigilance, okay, but it has an adventure on it. Cast off for 3 and 2 white. Sorcery, speed. 
destroy all non-giant creatures. All your changelings are giants. They're, they're, they're giants, so they're not going to die. This is great. All your changelings are going to survive, and all their stuff's going to die, and this is fantastic. We like this. And then, of course, you can cast the giant later. Uh, Realm Walker. Two colorless, one green. Shapeshifter changeling. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Most likely going to be shapeshifter. Uh, sometimes sliver, depending on what you have. Let me look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creatures, spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. Fantastic. Value. Reaper King. Wooburg or 10. Probably never going to cast it for 10, but you might cast it for 6 or or, or 8. Uh, or or That's probably it. Um, yes, so. Other Scarecrow creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. It is also a Scarecrow. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever another Scarecrow enters the battlefield on your control, destroy target permanent. All your changelings are also Scarecrows. It's going to be fantastic, destroying everything you want. Rebel Informer. Don't play this card if you're not playing in the league that I'm playing in, or... If you do, then you're going to be like, why is this card in this deck? Well, everybody's playing Morphon. So this allows you to remove all of their Morphons and then keep your Morphon on the battlefield, basically. So for two colorless and a black, it's a 1-2 Mercenary Rebel. And then it can't be the target of white spells or abilities, and you can pay three colorless. Put target Rebel card on the bottom of its owner's library. Pretty good specific card for this league. Replace it with anything else. Risen Reef, one colorless, green, blue. Elemental, 1-1. One, one. Whenever Risen Reef or another Elemental enters the battlefield under control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you put it in the battlefield tapped. If it is not, you put it into your hand. A lot of cool combos with that card. Shape Sharer, one colorless and a blue. Shapeshifter Changeling, 1-1. One, one. Pay two blue. I'm sorry, two colorless, one blue. Target Shapeshifter becomes a copy of target creature until your next turn. Remember that it will, it will persist all the way until your next turn. All on your creatures. It's great. You just, just remember it'll it'll do that. Skeletal changeling, one colorless, one black. Shapeshifter changeling, one one. Regenerate it with a black and a uh, a colorless. Mainly just here, just to be a changeling, and then trigger all that sweet stuff. Torn Mauler, two colorless, one red. Shapeshifter changeling for a two two. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a one one counter on Torn Mauler. It grows pretty big when you have three opponents or more casting spells. It can get out of hand pretty quickly. Universal Automaton, one mana, changeling, one, one shapeshifter, artifact. It's literally just here for enter the battlefield effects for all the other stuff, and it is a, uh, a changeling. Unsettled Mariner, white, blue, for a two, two, shapeshifter, changeling. Whenever you are a permanent you control, it becomes a target of ability. It gives ward one to all your stuff. They just didn't have ward back in the day. This is, uh, that's how, that's how, the, it's a lot easier now. Just say ward one. Valiant Changeling, seven mana for a three, three double striker. That's pretty bad. It is a shapeshifter changeling. That's better. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature type among uh, creatures you control. This effect can't reduce the cost of the, this spell by more than five colorless. So that ends up being two mana for a 3-3 double striker. Just remember that one creature does not meet the stipulation of everything. Because it is every... Like a changeling is all of the creature types. So you would think that it would reduce it by five. However, the way it actually works is that you need five creatures of different types uh, to reduce its mana cost by, by five. Have to be all different creature types. Where come at a price is the same thing, but with party mechanic. Uh, as far as how it works, you need four different creatures of different of a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, a wizard. Basically, you need four changelings. Uh, this spell casts one less to, to uh, cast for each creature in your party. Have four changeling, you got a full party. Then it's one black. Search your library for a card. You put that into your hand. You shuffle your library. If you have a full party, which I hope you do, you're playing changelings. You should. You may cast a spell with converted mana cost four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Pretty good. Even if you don't have a full party, you can still like pay like two or three. And it is a tutor, and it goes to your hand. Uh, it's pretty good. But the, the best value, of course, is full party. Crux of Fate, three mana, two black. Sorcery, destroy all dragons or... You're choosing one, by the way. Destroy all dragons or you're destroying all non-dragons. You're going to destroy all non-dragons 99... 93.26% of the time. Uh, there are very rare chances where you'd probably want to destroy all dragons. If there's another dragon deck that's like really out of hand and you, you gotta wipe the board, you can do that, I guess. Um, but you're gonna wipe all your all, you, you know, all your fortunate. But uh, yeah, cultivate. It's ramping. Distant melody. Three colorless, one blue. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Most likely, it's going to be shapeshifter. But there are things. There are ways you can change that. Uh, we'll get into it. Far seek. More ramp. Adama's Reach, more ramp. We have access to green. We're gonna we're gonna be ramping. 
Uh, mass appeal, two colorless, one blue. Draw a card for each human you control. All your changelings are humans. This is value. Rampant growth, we're ramping. Absorb identity, one blue, one colorless. Instant, return target creature to its owner's hand. You may have all your shapeshifters you control become copies of that creature until end of turn. Think of the possibilities. If anything, you're saving one of your creatures from something like a removal, or you're making some crazy combo with Risen Reef, and then all your all your shapeshifters are now Risen Reefs, and then you replay Risen Reef, and then you get all those triggers, and it's just to have fun. Beast Within, solid removal, two colorless, one green. Instant, destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 beast. Creature token. Just a solid removal. Gotta have it. Crib Swap. Two colorless, one white, changeling shapeshifter. It is an instant changeling shapeshifter, which is cool. Morphon reduces its mana cost by that white pip, so it's just going to be two colorless. Exile target creature, its controller creates a 1-1 colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling. You can remove your own stuff to get that 1-1 to then trigger a bunch of your stuff. Don't feel bad if you want to do that. You may get more value by doing that, depending on how what the uh, outcome is, but uh, you have to use your brain. The spark, very good removal. Black and a white, instant... Exile target permanent with mana value four or greater. Generous Grift, it's the white version of uh, Beast Within. Rapid Hybridization, it's Pongify, but uh, different. But it's a blue, destroy target creature, can't be regenerated. It is instant speed, which is nice. And they get a 3-3 green frog lizard creature token. Swords of the Plowshare, everybody should know what this card is, but if you don't, one white, exile, instant card, uh, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Good removal for one white. I like that. RK Signet is ramp for any color. Birthing Bows is a fantastic artifact card that creates changelings, which is cool. So it's three colorless. Four to tap it. Make a 2-2. Two, two. It is a shapeshifter changeling. Colorless. Chromatic Lantern. This is a five color deck. You're going to want to fix your mana. This fixes your mana very well. It's also ramp. This is also ramp. Fellow Our Stone. It's ramp. Maxwood, Maxwood Nexus. This card I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. Uh, it's four mana. It's an artifact. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. This basically gives every creature in your deck changeling, which is awesome because that benefits a lot of different things. There's a lot of combos. Uh, Morphon makes them all cheaper now. Doesn't matter if they're a changeling now. Now they're all changelings, so this is great. Uh, but then also, for three colorless, you tap it, you create a 2-2 two -two changeling. Uh, so it's a generator for those changelings, for those enter the battlefield effects and there's some synergy here. Pyre of Heroes. Two colorless artifact. You tap two colorless. You tap the Pyre of Heroes. You sacrifice a creature. You search your library for a creature card to share as a creature type with the sacrificed creature and has converted mana cost of equal to one. You know Birthing Pod? This is Birthing Pod, but slightly worse, but kind of better. It's cheaper to get out, but then it has stipulations. Because you have to have the this, this sacrificed creature has to share a, con, a, a actual creature type with the thing you're going to get. But then all changelings are all creatures, so then any... Changeling can get any creature, but any creature can't get any... No, every creature can get a Changeling as well. It's great for this deck. So yes, um, you put that creature onto the battlefield, by the way. There's one stipulation that makes this card... Ang it angers me. Activate this ability only as you anytime you cast a sorcery. Why well, is Birthing Pod instant, but this is uh, sorcery speed. This sucks. Oh, well, you know, it is what it is. It's newer. They gotta, gotta make it crap. It's like 93 cents. Soul Ring, it's, it's going to be in every deck. Talisman, it's ramp, 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 ramp. Arcane Adaption, two colorless, one blue, enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Uh, just remember, if you call Shapeshifter, that does not make them changelings. So the better choice, potentially, depending on the situation... You're going to want to use this for Liliana's Contract, which is probably the next card I'm going to click. It's not. Kindred Discovery. We'll get there. Three colorless, two blue. As Kindred Discovery enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature you control, the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. This is a lot of value if it sticks. And you're going to probably choose Shapeshifter. But if you've got, uh, you know, you've got Arcane Adaption, you choose whatever that is. Uh, you basically choose whatever Morphon you chose. Um, if you've got... Um, Mask with Nexus, it doesn't matter what you pick, um, but pick something that's a, a lot of value, most likely Shapeshifter, because they get rid of your Mask with Nexus, then you get... Don't put yourself in that situation, is what I'm trying to say. Liliana's Contract, though, this is what I was talking about earlier. Three colorless, two black, is an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw four cards and you lose four life. That's value, if I have to say so myself, but there's more. Oh, wait. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more demons with different names, you win the game. So all changelings are demons. Most of them have different names. I say most because you are creating two, two shapeshifter tokens. You can't win with multiple shapeshifter tokens, but you can win if they're different names. Maelstrom Nexus, I just, I like Cascade, okay? I, I just, this might not be amazing, but for Wooburg, it's an enchantment. The first spell you cast each turn has Cascade. For those of you that don't know what Cascade is, basically, whatever the mana value is on that card, you can reveal cards from the top of your library until you hit something that's cheaper. Then it casts for free. It is a May. You don't have to. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the first spell, you just get a lot of your value from the first spell you cast every turn, and, uh, it just sits there, and it does great things. I like it. It's great. Ferrari's Wake, another one of those fancy cards that just sit there and provide all kinds of stuff. So, for three, and a green, and a white, enchantment, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. That's, you know, whatever. But, the better version, uh, or the better portion of this card, whenever you tap out land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. Double your mana. I like it. Reflections of Lit Jara. Four colorless and one blue enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Probably going to be Shapeshifter, um, but it could be depending. If you have Maxwood Nexus, again, it doesn't matter, but probably a still pick Shapeshifter. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. It's pretty good. A lot of things happen. Ally Kamen, now we're in the lands. The lands also are, are cool because of changelings. Changelings make the, I don't know, I, I think this deck's sick. So Ally Encampment. Uh, tap for add colorless, or tap add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast ally spells. All of your changelings are allies, so this is basically just a, a, a full five color land for them. Uh, also, you can tap one colorless, tap this, sacrifice ally encampment, return target ally you control to its owner's hand, so it kind of protects on, on some of those, uh, those changelings you like so much, or the mask with nexus, protect anything. Ancient Amphitheater, I tried picking, because this is a budget deck, I tried picking lands that were dual or try, um, that had, like, really kooky, like, like for instance, as an Ancient Amphitheater enters the battlefield, you may reveal a giant from your hand. If you don't, it comes in the battlefield tapped. Well, this is a dual land for our deck, because the majority of our cards are Shapeshifter Changelings. You can just reveal a, shape, a Changeling card, and it is a giant, so you're good to go. There's a few cards like that. Cascading Cataract, this just uh, taps for a colorless. And also, you can filter five colorless with it. And so if you have six mana, you can uh, give any kind of combination of uh, color. It's color fixing. It's a cheap color fixing. Nice. Uh, Command Tower. It's going to be in every commander deck. Contested Cliffs is nice. It taps for our colorless. You'll also notice I don't put tapped lands in my deck for the most part. There's like two in this deck. Um, and those might actually come out soon. But yeah, Contested Cliffs, tap for our colorless. Or uh, tap a red and a green. Tap target beast you control, or tap it, target beast you control, fights target creature and opponent controls. Pretty good when your changelings can start murking stuff, um, and you get to choose how they fight, so that's cool. Evolving, Evolving Wilds is one of those cards. It's pretty good mana fixing. It's a fetch land, it thins the deck a little bit, gets exactly the land you need. It doesn't play taps, which that really sucks, but it's not too bad. Exotic Orchard, um, in a Morphon field, when everybody's playing Morphon, the odds of you getting all five colors from this land are very high. Uh, otherwise, you're playing against three other opponents. Most likely, you'll get the colors you need from this, but don't depend on it. So don't keep a hand like if you don't think that you're going to... If you depend on this land, it can bite you in the butt. Just be careful. Uh, Flamekin Village is like that giant card, but instead it's for elementals. But it does have tap one red, tap it. Um, target creature gains haste until end of turn. That's pretty cool. Flood of Groves, just a land. Uh, there's like eight force in here. There's like five islands uh land of our waste is just a dual land but it also taps for colorless so you don't always have to ping yourself so try to use the other lands first because this hurts you don't hurt yourself uh two mountains i think uh murmuring bosk is a forest which is kind of cool for like uh not rampant growth because it's not a basic land but uh maybe not far seek but the other one uh or maybe it is far seek whatever the one that gets the forest because there's one that doesn't get all any of the, the things but the you know this one is the thing you can you can get this from something Anyways, uh, it's like the giant card, but for tree folks, but again, changeling, who cares? But it's a tri land, which is cool. I like that, the value. Path of Ancestry, this one is one of, this is like the second card that comes in the battlefield tapped. I don't love it, but it taps for one, uh, it's basically, uh, what you call it, the uh, command tower, but it allows you to scry when you cast things that share a type with your commander. But it, everything shares a type with your commander because your commander is every creature. Uh, so you get to scry every time you cast a creature with this land. It's probably worth it. I don't know. It's up to you. Got like four planes or five planes maybe? 
uh, two swamps, and then Swamp Yard, which is really cool. Uh, it's just taps for a colorless. Doesn't come into play tapped. Fantastic. Regenerate target insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. Remember, changelings are everything. So this regenerates any creature, any changeling. Tap. Boom. Regenerated. Pretty nice. Have my coast, just a dual land or a normal land. Don't, don't ping yourself if you don't have to. And that's the end. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below um, in the comment section. I do read every comment so I can help if there's any uh, request. The link of the deck will be down in the description as well. I plan to make a follow up. I'll have decks at 150, 200, and 250 also in the next video of the follow up of this video. And when that video will be at a $250 price value, so there's going to be better cards. Uh, so if you have a uh, $100 for your budget, you can build this deck. And, like, uh, Just make sure you, you don't have to choose uh, Morphon. And also take out Rebel Informer for any other card you want. Uh, Fist of the Suns. Perfect. Boom. Good. You're done. You're, you got it. You, you did it. Or Joda. It's fine. Either one. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, see you around.